today we're going to be talking about the genetic trauma of shame. Now, shame often is related to some deep-seated beliefs of inadequacy and the expectation of others uh, being less valuable than your peers. This fear of inadequacy can drive individuals to overcompensate. And by overcompensating, you assume excessive amounts of responsibility. You perpetually help people. And maybe you exhibit this outward demeanor of, you know, I'm always here to help. But on this superficial level, that's what it looks like. But deeper, you're seeking validation. You're hoping to be um, approved of, loved, and accepted. And this can show up with family, with our children, with our workspace, many areas of our life. When confronted by the fear of failure, individuals with the shame genetic trauma often resort to deflecting their emotions through humor or projecting their insecurities onto others. In its most extreme form, this can lead to these individuals shaming or discrediting others. However, the key to addressing this trauma lies not in avoidance or defensiveness, but in embracing your vulnerability, trust, and being willing to confront these feelings with an open heart instead of an ego seeking to feel better. The process to begin to understand that there is nothing shameful about you. You know, this is a program of the 3D matrix and instead of grappling with the shame of this genetic trauma, you know, you actually can tap into great potential for financial success, I mean, leveraging an innate ability to be at ease with handling anything that show up in your life on a relationship level. You can actually feel more worthy and this will change what you manifest. You know, in the ceaseless pursuit to prove your worth, sometimes we lose ourselves. And this could manifest as being perfectionists, people who are workaholics, um, constantly trying to be validated by others to feel worthy. And the roots of this related genetic trauma associated with shame is actually a crucial step towards freeing yourself from the burden of feeling this lack of worthiness. Um, the potential for authentic relationships, heartfelt self-expression, being more authentic underneath the trauma of shame is just sitting there waiting on you to have certain tools to be able to step into these aspects of yourself. You know, feeling like you're less valuable than people because of your inadequacies or your weaknesses, you know, constantly falling into people pleasing behavior, um, over giving, not knowing when to receive. A lot of people who have this genetic trauma are very sacrificial, uh, you know, and this could show up even growing up as children. Um, maybe the dynamic in your household was no matter what's happening, I will sacrifice myself. I will sacrifice my own joy, my own happiness to make other people happy, to make other people feel better. As you grow up, you start to have relationships that are shallow, where people can't really see you, people can't really feel you. And sometimes we, in our attempt to ignore, deny, repress, or push this back, we create jokes. We even create jokes about our own self because we're trying to avoid feeling that feeling of shame, like something is wrong with me. And, you know, these feelings, actually, we did a shame detox and we worked with at least 150 people. And so many of us resonated with this, you know, and what I have found that this huge trend of, um, you know, narcissism and narcissism, <laughs> that's a word, right? If it's not, it's, it is one today. But this whole thing around this, if you really look at it, there's a huge amount of subconscious shame beneath all of this. And even with the um, more popular self-mastery information coming out about codependency, 
is oftentimes rooted in shame as well. I can relate to this and I will relentlessly sacrifice myself to the point where people think that I'm so strong and resilient. They don't feel like that they have to be um, someone who reciprocates the energy that I give to them. And I would take on more burden than I can actually handle. But I didn't want to be seen as a burden. So I would take on a lot of weight and responsibility, hoping to be seen as an asset by people, to be validated and be loved. There was a time where I wouldn't even admit to this publicly. It was uncomfortable for me to think about the fact that a lot of the suffering in my life was actually being created by myself. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, you know, if you resonate with this and you may be someone who is carrying the genetic trauma of shame as well. Being a high value man or woman, there are a lot of steps that one must take to get to this space. But without being able to acknowledge the ways that we self-sacrifice um, deflect and avoid, how can you actually feel like you have value when every day of your life is spent trying to keep the peace, fix other people's problems, prove that you're a good person, prove that you're a good friend, you're a good man, you're a good woman, you're a good parent. And this creates a lot of stress. And what happens once we get in this cycle of these self-fulfilling prophecies, we actually forget who our authentic self is and our false self mask become what we use in every area of our life. And we actually think that that's us. You know, you can hear, hear it in conversation where you may say something like, you know, well, I'm, I just like to help people. And that may be true, but if you're doing it and negating from the fact that you deserve to take care of yourself, to be loved as you are, well, you're actually setting yourself up for disappointment. So one of the things that can help heal this specific genetic trauma is humor. Humor in the more healthy way. Being able to look back at some things that happened and embrace it and observe it from a non-judgmental neutral space see it as it is, and you will begin to see the comedy in a lot of the drama. And the deeper sense of self-worth that you were looking for actually would come from you being able to laugh a little, being able to laugh at yourself, being able to see that you're not broken, you're not bad. It's the programming, the conditioning, that is the reason we operate the way we do. It's nothing wrong with none of us. And I have said this previously before in this series and many others, and I will say it again. There is no right and wrong. There is only what's useful and what is not. What's necessary and what is not. And once you can isolate these things, life becomes more simple. Life becomes more satisfying and fulfilling. Throughout this process of identifying the areas where you feel this shame, you will not only be able to develop a sense of humor um, around this, but you will actually be able to change what you are attracting into your life just by changing the set point of how you feel about you. What happens in our life isn't what creates our reality. The way we respond to what happens in our life creates our reality. So yes, this started off a little heavy and it started off direct and getting straight to the point. I got a Scorpio moon, I'm a Virgo rising. I, I like to be direct. I don't want to waste people time. In the art of creatively innovating these shadow characteristics and integrating with the shadow self 
and being able to actually be vulnerable and transparent and honest is what creates more fulfilling lives, more fulfilling relationships. And one thing that I have noticed is that Oftentimes, the roots of this is not only from this life, but from past lives, you know, and let me give you an example. Whether you believe in past lives or not, it don't matter because the fact is our past lives absolutely affect the soul contracts that we choose in this lifetime. And having the genetic trauma which means you are the one who has been assigned the mission to integrate these aspects of yourself to discover these deeper wounds and their roots and to innovate to renovate to be able to be the phoenix rising from the ashes because it's all useful none of this is just happening to us for the sake of happening to us. So if in a past life you were shamed for your choices or your values or your beliefs, it could have been around your sexuality. It could have been around what you wanted to do in life for a living. It could have been around actually your gender. It's a lot of shame that has been associated with being a woman and a lot of women try to assimilate to the programs um to not feel ashamed about certain things and a great example of that would be you know i was ashamed to come out of the closet as being a healer right we're not going to use the word which is not necessary because we've already been through that we've already been murdered and burned at the stake for these things so i say healer because working with elements working with energies working with crystals minerals herbs um, the element of air your mental space shifting your perspective these things are associated with people who are healers and this is what we came to do. So there is a lot of shame associated with a lot of the spiritual and metaphysical practices that proved to be effective for me. And before I started the business, I wanted to see, like, is this just helping me? Or is this something that can help other people? And I found that it was useful, not just for me, but it was useful for other people as well. With that being said, I want to invite you to book a human design Akashic Record reading so we could delve into some of your past lives and so we can see how can we work around some of the ways your trauma has showed up. So bear with me. I got a house full and I am multitasking and trying to get this done. So if my background is noisy, I hope that you can forgive me and look over that because I did not want to push this series back. Um, and my life is just really full. I'm not going to say it's hard or stressful. It's just a full life. So if this is resonating with you and if you would like to explore deeper specifically for you, what can help you um, be more... Hmm more at ease with who you are on every level and learn how to manifest from the space of who you are join me i will put all of the links in the description and y'all already know what it is namaste new me stay